Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to tonight's uh, Life Stories Worldwide broadcast, where we broadcast every Monday evening at 8 o'clock UK time, uh, and we have stories from different people from all over the world, uh, different backgrounds and different uh, life experiences, uh, people who have suffered rejection, drug addiction, uh, and various things impacting on people's lives that you see day to day. But we, we, we share these stories are shared, shared uh, by, by men principally, and uh, we have ladies as well, uh, where Jesus has affected their life. And we're just going to sh share one tonight um, from a gentleman called Cyril Gordon. Uh, he was born in France. Uh, he was brought up, as a, he'll tell you, as a, 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 in a Jewish background. However, God impacted his life uh, in a different way uh, uh, in the 1990s, and he'll share that tonight. Um, I just want to to say if uh, you can see the broadcast on Zoom, on YouTube or Facebook, if you go to our uh, website, which is world, uh, lifestoriesworldwide.com, uh, I'll fill in some more details about that later on. Uh, we also have a radio uh, uh, station as well, which we, you can access through Spotify, which again, we can share some details about that uh, later on. Um, our contact number, if you want to message us for anything, either on WhatsApp or by uh, telephone, it'll come up on the screen in a minute, but I'll just tell you it's plus four four. 794-355-0287. If there's anything, even through the broadcast, that you want to talk about, please call that number or leave a message. Someday someone will uh, contact you and help you uh, with that. So uh, from me, I'm going to pass uh, the, the meeting over to Cyril. Uh, Cyril Gordon, he's, he's based in uh, the west coast of America uh, at the moment and he can share his life story. Cyril, uh, over to you. Thank you so much. Greetings from uh, Gardena, California, just south of Los Angeles. Uh, the background is from Venice Beach, California. Uh, my name is Cyril Daniel Gordon. I uh, was born uh, near Paris in a town called Fontenay-sous-Bois. My mother was a Jew from Egypt. Uh, she was kicked out, her and her family, uh, in the 50s. Uh, at that time, all the Jews in Egypt were kicked out of the, Egypt. Most, A lot of them went to France. That's where my family went. And uh, my mother married a French Jew named Michel. Uh, she had my brother and I, and they got divorced. My mother took us to San Francisco, where her brother was living, and uh, then my grandmother moved out there after her husband passed away and uh, bought a house, and uh, that's where we grew up, in San Francisco proper, in the Marina Green. Uh, we were the only Jews in an Italian Catholic neighborhood, and uh, we were raised in Reformed Judaism, uh, which is kind of like high holiday Judaism. Uh, we didn't take the Bible very seriously. Uh, it was mostly about uh, observing the holidays when they came up, Rosh Hashanah, Passover, Yom Kippur. And um, it was more like being culturally Jewish. Uh, and uh, had my bar mitzvah. And I, when I turned 13, uh, it's a right to manhood uh, among the Jews, where you get to read from the Hebrew scriptures in front of all your friends and family and uh, you get presents, and uh, it's supposed to be your rite of passage to adulthood. Uh, I, I went to the biggest synagogue in San Francisco, Temple Emanuel. Uh, but after that, uh, it was party time. I didn't have to go to synagogue anymore, and I uh, was in high school and went to college at UC Santa Barbara, where I studied fine art. I was a painter. I did abstract painting, graduated in studio art, uh, and did really well with my art, uh, sold almost everything, had sponsors from Paris, France. Uh, but while I was in college at UC Santa Barbara, which is a, a party school, uh, a lot of partying goes on there, and I was in the thick of it. 
Uh, I was living a hedonistic lifestyle. Uh, and I got sick of it by my sophomore year. And I wondered if there was more to life. Uh, and uh, started searching. And of course, where did I start looking? Exactly where I wasn't supposed to as a Jew. Uh, Eastern religion. Uh, the Bible uh, in second chapter of Isaiah, God makes, makes it very clear. He warns the Jewish people about going the way of the East. And unfortunately, when Jews start searching for the truth, many of them, including myself, went the way of the East because it has an, uh, an air of, of spirituality with the meditation and the vegetarianism and the ascetism is very attractive. Uh, so I got into Buddhism, Zen, Taoism, uh, some Hinduism, existentialism. I dabbled in different philosophies and, and uh, Eastern religions for a couple years uh, and uh, didn't find what I was looking for. Finally, uh, took a course at the university on Jewish mysticism, and there I discovered that. If you would like to speak to us here at Life Stories Worldwide, you can simply by dialing plus four four seven nine four three double five zero two eight seven. Call us now. Life Stories Worldwide is broadcast live every Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time. We broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, and StreamYard. Why not join us every Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time for Life Stories Worldwide. There are Jews who are seeking God, and they're doing it through Kabbalah, esot esotericism, uh, uh, and various disciplines using the Bible, the Hebrew uh, Holy Scriptures, and that was uh, attractive to me. And so I got into that, and I said, you know, I'm going to start looking more into my Jewish background. So uh, while I was in Israel on an art program, uh, I, on my spare time, I went to Jerusalem and took some free classes with some Orthodox Jewish organizations, uh, Asia Torah, et cetera, et cetera. And through those courses, I came to see that without a doubt, the Hebrew scriptures were inspired by God. No man could have written these. Uh, I came to that conclusion because of the many prophecies in the scriptures that were fulfilled to the letter. Uh, also through the practice of gematria, the study of numbers uh, through the Hebrew uh, letters. Um, there was an incredible order to God's word that no man could have put together, even with a computer. So I started taking the scriptures seriously for the first time in my life. And I was probably 20 years old at this time. And so as a Jew, the word of God says that we made a covenant with God at Mount Sinai, that we would obey these laws God gave us. And if we didn't, we would get in big trouble. Well, look at the history of my Jewish people, and that's exactly what's happened. When we when we were seeking God and and uh, uh, try to follow His direction, we were blessed. When we rebelled, we were cursed. So I said, "Well, easy enough. All I need to do is follow these laws, and my life will go well." So I started eating kosher. I started trying to observe the Sabbath on Saturdays. I grew out my beard. I stayed away from Gentiles. We're commanded to be separate according to the law of Moses. Um, my family thought I went nuts. They're not religious. They're, uh, they don't take the scriptures very serious. But I really wanted to do the right thing and did my best to follow these laws. I graduated the university in 1989. And then I went to the Bay Area in Emeryville, across the Bay from San Francisco, where I opened a studio and started painting full time. Uh, I was showing my art in galleries and museums. Uh, and uh, uh, at the same time searching uh, and started studying with a rabbi nearby, uh, we started getting into Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, but I was still into New Age, and I kind of mixed the two. Uh, but 
Uh, my life wasn't getting any better. And the more I tried to follow these laws of righteousness, the more I realized I couldn't do it. I was failing miserably, um, uh, especially when it came to uh, women. I, I, I was living with a, a woman. I, you know, according to the scriptures, you're not supposed to unless you're married. Uh, and um, uh, the more I got into these uh, 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 new age practices, the more out of control I was. I wasn't in control of my life anymore. I was doing things I knew were wrong and I couldn't stop. Um, <clears throat> uh, I had uh, gotten a girl pregnant. She had an abortion. Uh, and, and I didn't know much about abortions back then, but I, I could tell you that the day she had the abortion, a darkness came upon me, a tangible oppression. I And I never forgot that. And my life really took a, a turn for the worst after that. Uh, I, eventually, I became uh, uh, addicted to pornography. I was seeing prostitutes, going to massage parlors, and I couldn't stop. And I realized there's something really wrong here because this was destroying me. And I was desperate. I was even going to gypsies and asking them for help. I was trying to get help from my rabbi, and he tried to do some mysticism to heal me, and that didn't work. Uh, I was pretty desperate. Uh, when I came back to the States after being in Israel for several months, uh, I started going to deserts a lot. I fell in love with the deserts when I went to Israel, the, uh, the Sinai, the Negev. And a rabbi I studied with, I remember he said, if you want to get close to God, go to the desert. So when I came back to California, uh, me and my buddies would go out to the deserts a lot. Uh, Joshua Tree, Death Valley, Saline Valley, the Mojave. Uh, but I never went alone. Uh, and every time I went to the desert, it was a search for the truth. I cried out to God, but nothing really happened. After the abortion and the oppression that came on me, I, I went to, to the desert alone. And this was very unusual. I never did that. I, you don't take the desert lightly. It's not a place to mess around. But I, I wanted to be alone with God. And uh, so I went to the desert in the middle of winter, uh, Joshua Tree National Park. It's a high desert. And at night it gets very cold in the winter. But I went on, I found an isolated campsite and I took a long walk. And uh, I read about how my people offered sacrifices to God to be in his presence. So in my simple way, after walking many miles into an isolated uh, canyon, valley, I took all the food I had and I dumped it on a rock as my sacrifice to God. I was so desperate to connect. Uh, and um, to my amazement, soon after that, uh, the, the sky was clear, but all of a sudden a cloud appeared. It's very easy to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Life Stories at Lunch to receive notifications of when we are live. Simply click the bell. If you would like to contact us here at Life Stories Worldwide, you can. Simply by emailing lifestoriesworldwide at gmail.com or visit our website at lifestoriesworldwide.com. And as I looked at this cloud, it made the impression of a roadway to heaven guarded by two angels uh, with six wings each, two coming out of the back of the head, two coming out of the back, and two coming out of the Achilles heel. They were guarding this roadway to heaven with a spear. And I was filled with a sense of joy and hope that God was going to show me the way. Uh, I didn't hear anything. Nothing was communicated except this sense of hope. And I looked at this vision and wept for hours and hours. And all of a sudden, another cloud appeared. And uh, there was a, an, an image in this cloud of a man laying down on his back. He had his hands crossed over his chest. And he had a crown of thorns around his head and a beard. And I wondered, who is that? What does he have to do with the other vision? Uh, I mean, I'm crying out to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that I know is the one true God. And what is Jesus showing up 
in this vision for. It didn't make any sense. Uh, but I looked at that vision until the sun went down, and I realized I needed to get back. I was far from my camp, and in, uh, being stuck out in the middle of a desert, uh, you didn't want that to happen. I wasn't prepared to be staying out there at night. So I quickly tried to make my way back to the camp. Unfortunately, the sun went down, and I was lost in the desert. Uh, and uh, thankfully, I found a dirt road. I figured if I followed it, I'd end up somewhere. And so I walked and walked and walked for hours, nothing, nothing. Finally, I'm talking to God, and I'm saying, okay, you just showed me this vision, and now I'm going to die in the desert. doesn't make sense. But in his mercy, uh, all of a sudden, I saw two lights coming towards me in the dark, and they came closer and closer, and there was uh, two rangers in a truck that were driving up this road in the middle of the night. Uh, well, they were quite surprised to see me as I was to see them. Uh, they ended up checking me out and driving me back to the camp, and I was out of there. Uh, and uh, after that day, which was about 1989, I started looking into Jesus, wondering why he showed up in this vision. And uh, I kept getting the wrong Jesus. Uh, I was asking my rabbi, and he said, oh, he was a troublemaker. Uh, I was reading books by an author named Bagant uh, that was just saying that Jesus escaped the crucifixion, and he went to southern Europe where he had a family, and his children became the kings of Europe. Uh, and then all these secret societies came out of that. Uh, I was so desperate, I even went to psychics and asked them, even though I knew it was forbidden. And they were trying to tell me that Jesus was some kind of uh, great soul that attained Christ consciousness. Well, while this is all happening, my life is spiraling out of control. Uh, I had gotten more and more addicted to porn and, and, and prostitutes. I ended up getting arrested in San Francisco uh, getting into a mess with a prostitute. <clears throat> I had three felonies hanging over my head, uh, $25,000 bail, uh, and it wasn't looking good. Well, they put me in this special section of the prison just for people that were, you know, on meds or sick. And I wasn't on meds or sick, and it was amazing they didn't stick me in general public, in the, the general population where things could have gotten pretty bad. Uh, they stuck me in this medical ward, and I got the last bunk out of about 80 bunks. Uh, I got the top bunk, and I'll never forget, etched on this wall in the thick oil-based paint in big block letters was Jesus. I got the Jesus bunk, and uh, I was kind of upset about it. I go, why did I get, have to get the Jesus bunk? But it was on that bunk that I cried out to God and I said, get me out of here and I'll do anything. And he even sent uh, some homeless guy who got arrested for vagrancy into my cell and he tried to preach to me and I was arguing with him. Uh, anyways, four days later, I was let out. Everything got dropped. I didn't even have to go to arraignment. And uh, I went... Uh, uh, I lived uh, at that point. I had moved out of my studio, and I was living with my grandmother in, in the Marina Green in San Francisco, wondering what to do with my life. My art career had kind of fizzled out, uh, and uh, my brother was going to Cal Poly, which is a university four hours south of San Francisco, and I went down there to help him uh, move. Uh, and when I went down there, I met his uh, landlord, who was a Christian, and. Uh, uh, we started talking about the Bible and Jesus, and I saw her Bible, and it was very well read, outlined, etc. And I saw a, a, a piece, uh, a spiritual piece in her that I didn't have. And I'm supposed to come from the Levites and the Cohens, according to my grandmother, and she was a Gentile, but she had a spiritual peace uh, and a faith in the God of Israel that I didn't have. And you could say she made me jealous for Jesus, and that comes right out of the scriptures. In Romans 11, 11, the Lord says, Salvation came to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. And indeed, I was envious of what she had. Uh, and we talked all night. I eventually went back to San Francisco. 
I thought it was the end of that. But two weeks later, she sent me a whole box of books about the real Jesus, the one in the Bible, uh, the one that fulfilled the many prophecies in the Bible uh, about who the Messiah would be. And If you would like to contact us here at Life Stories Worldwide, you can. Simply by emailing lifestoriesworldwide at gmail.com or visit our website at lifestoriesworldwide.com. <laughs>